Are you all ready to laugh at some absolutely evil fundamentalist Christian cults? Because I have content just for you. Some of you may know of an individual by the name of Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos. Now, if you were around in the last 10 years on the internet at all or paying attention to the news, Milo Yiannopoulos was this alt-right guy whose face was all over the news all the time. He was always talking about cancel culture. He was always talking about how gay people are just way too PC these days. He was going over and doing, um, you know, he had a tour that was called Canceled, I think, where he had tape over his mouth. This guy was all the fuck over the place. He was a gay guy, openly gay, conservative made lots of homophobic jokes, lots of transphobic jokes, lots of racist jokes, and all of it was he was the the based the based right-wing gay guy. Well, it's not very surprising to most people who are familiar with this type of cycle, but Milo Yiannopoulos ain't doing so hot these days. See, Milo Yiannopoulos uh had a bit of a cancellation of himself from his own people. Turns out that uh the right-wingers found a whole bunch of videos of Milo going on television shows, including, I believe it was the Joe Rogan. No, it wasn't Joe Rogan. Uh, actually, yes, I did. I do believe he talked about it on Joe Rogan, but he also talked about it on a uh, on another right-wing podcast where he advocated, and I'm not kidding you, he advocated that he thought it was a good thing that he was sexually abused as a child and that he actually would advocate for it because he thought it taught him a lot and that's a pretty fucked up thing to say and as it turns out it was across the line for the right wingers as well so he got canceled he got turbo canceled and milo disappeared or so we all thought but in this meantime while he disappeared out of the out of the public eye He's been up to some things. Oh, it was the drunken peasants. There you go. Yeah, that was on drunken peasants that he said that. Yeah, the, exactly. Vermin says the right wingers got mad for him saying the quiet part out loud. Yes, literally. Even though right wing Christians are the ones who perpetrated the child abuse in the Catholic Church, it was right wingers who canceled him over this. It's an interesting whole thing. Now, um, for a lot of people, Milo Yiannopoulos sort of disappeared out of the public eye. But for the rest of us, us savvy viewers, we know what Milo's been up to. See, Milo has been on a new grift, and his new grift is the ex-sodomite grift. Uh, about a year or a year and a half ago, Milo had a big interview where he came out as no longer gay. So he's given up the gay, so to say. Yes. Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos came out as no longer gay. It's like that image where it's like, I am no longer mentally ill. Except I am no longer homosexual. And it was wild, okay? It was a wild ride. Um, we watched it on my channel. If you search Demon Mama Milo Yiannopoulos, you will see our coverage of those interviews. It was hilarious. Milo Yiannopoulos is the least convincing former gay possible. And interestingly, he's had an increasingly strong relationship with a Catholic cult leader by the name of Michael uh, of Michael Voris. A lot of my viewers already know this, but some of my newcomers do not. So this is for you all. Michael Voris uh, runs a a Catholic uh, a a Catholic splinter group, um, which online is known as the Church Militant. Okay, <laughs> that name straight out of fucking Game of Thrones, straight out of the fucking Crusades. It's a very extreme group that pushes conversion therapy, explicit transphobia, explicit homophobia. He brands himself as a former homosexual who uh, found God and now lives a good life. And interestingly, him and Milo make a lot of content together now and the sexual tension is fucking unbelievable. Now, we all know these guys are fucking. 
I don't feel bad about speculating about that at all. Both of them are are fucking conversion therapy grifters. They are literal, the definition of the grifteriest grifters ever, literally making a Catholic splinter group cult to just gather money for free from, from faithful people. The oldest grift in the book, the church grift. You want to rewatch the originals? Maybe another time. Maybe another time. By the way, thank you very much, King Fluffy. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Um, they're, These two have the wildest dynamic. But the real fun... Well, that is all fun. But the fun that we're going to be having today is the fact that now that, now that Milo has been canceled, got involved in the little uh, cult thing, he's now been relegated to making infomercials. Which is like the funniest shit you can possibly imagine. If you know Milo Yiannopoulos, Milo Yiannopoulos is the smarmiest, smuggest. Everything he talked about when he was the big right-wing guy was how he lived a great life, how he would li lived a ritzy life, and now he wears fucking Christmas sweaters and works Christian infomercials. And it is the funniest shit ever. And we've got some to watch today. That was a long windup to get us here. But I want you to be in the know. All of you newcomers who weren't here the last time we watched this shit. I want you to know what we're doing. Today, we're watching Milo Yiannopoulos infomercials with Christ. And it's amazing. Oh, hey, yeah. thank you. So, this is the channel in question. Okay? This is the one we're talking about. The Church Militant. Okay? Okay? It's got to be Catholic. The vortex. Horror in D.C. No trust. Young conservative Catholics. Black trads matter. Oh my god. That sounds... Oh! We can't. We can't get distracted, everybody. We can't fucking get distracted. We can't. We have to go to the stuff we came here for. Which is the church militant store show. So we have the Christmas special was the last one that we watched. We did not watch episode two and we did not watch episode three, which means we have two fucking episodes to watch. The last one we watched was this one. Let's jump into it. Hello. Very not gay. We open it right up. Fucking b b b bazinga. Definitely not fucking gay. Absolutely not gay. Never been gay. This out. What the hell? The most ungay. Uh, this is the straightest man I've ever seen. Again, and welcome to the Church Militant Shop. I'm Miley Anopoulos, and this is Deborah Vaughan. How are you doing, Deborah? Good. How are you? I'm well. You've been very busy. I have been busy today. That's right. Um, but I, this is, I've saved the best for last. This is. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm not just flattering you, Deborah. I'm not. This is my favorite assignment of the day. Well, I. Now this is something that happens in every episode they always are super passive aggressive to one another like it's bad now milo is good at being passive aggressive deb however is not okay i'm just telling you deb tries to be like passive aggressive and catty and she can't she just fails so milo's always running circles around her also deb is a terrible saleswoman just Holy shit. She can't sell one of these products for the life. It under it makes sense why they needed Milo to sell these things. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. And this is a lot of fun. Well, let's get Do you believe her? This is this is a lot of fun. Get to it. We've got three beautiful selections today, which mm -hmm. um you've put together for us. And we're going to start. I know that the viewers' eyes will be wandering to this magnificent piece in the middle, but we're going to make you wait for oh, it. Oh yeah, totally. And we're going to start. Are you excited, instead, everybody? Um, with a wonderful crucifix, which I own. We always say that. Don't, they're going to stop believing us after I a while. Know, I know. They're going to say, so "Oh true. yeah, you always say that." I've got one at home. If I showed you my house, if I showed you my house, well, first of all, you'd be very upset by the mess. Uh, but second of all, you would <laughs> you would finally believe me that all these things we say we have at home, we do indeed. Have at home this is a beautiful crucifix why don't you talk us a little bit through it i know you're a former saleswoman mama do you think he's better at salesmanship than you well he has an advantage which is that he's a man men are and this is this is going to sound like the most sexist thing i've ever said in america men are always better at sales 
And it's not because women are better salespeople or men are better salespeople. It's just because fucking Americans hate women. You don't understand it. They fucking hate women. So in sales, if you're a guy, it doesn't matter. You're going to do better. Unless you are literally the scariest, most unskilled man in the world. Yeah. It's literally because customers are sexist. I know. It sucks, but it's true. It's literally fucking true. And no, and by the way, there's a, there, you're going to get like incel cope who are like, oh yeah, well, you know, beautiful women, people will buy stuff from a beautiful woman. No, like one dumb coomer will buy something from a woman versus every single dude that walks in all day and every single dude's wife that walks in every day and will not buy anything from a woman. So no, actually no. Um, didn't you do well? Yeah, I still did well. Like, you can do well as a saleswoman. There are successful saleswomen. But what I'm saying is that if you are a man, you will all, you will just do better. Like, you will just succeed more in sales. It really is that bad. Yeah, I still did good, but it's just how it goes. It's really bad. Anyway, let's continue. So, um, it's from our Veronese collection. And um, it's got two two different medias again. It's got the bronze background. It's got the pewter crucifix. So you have um, a lot of, um, I, I want to say depth, but... Um Do you see what I'm saying, though, about Deb? If, if, this w if this show was just Deb, it would be the most desperate shit ever. She's like, it has a lot of, um, has a whole lot of, uh, you know, it... it you know, it looks it looks deep. It looks deep is what I'm saying. You know, it, it's very deep. It has a lot of depth to it. Um, I really think it's interesting to have both mediums. How many views does this have? This has eight thousand eight hundred and fifty one. Now, it, to be fair, it's a bit of an older video, but you know, we're watching cult content. Come on. There. It's the dimension of it, isn't it? It's the it's the. This is an this is an interesting piece because it's got the two different finishes together in the same. Uh, finishes. That's what I was trying to say. Thank right. You. So we've got we 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 have these lovely uh, pewter finishes, the bronze finishes. Mm -hmm. This is one of those pieces that mixes the two, mm -hmm. with the effect that um, Jesus really stands out. Right. And also because he's in silver, the contours and everything, you get a real sense of um. What I like about this one is you get a real sense of of the of the flesh and blood of a person of the human figure, because so often with these uh, he says a version of this every single episode every single episode we've watched he always says it just it looks so real unlike most other ones every episode how many how many can you say just look real unlike every other one until we've seen every jesus statue in existence um with with crucifixes that don't have that contrast he sort of fades into the cross doesn't he and you right. don't you, you don't manage to pick out some of the details right let's just pick this up for a second um now the advantage of this one i actually don't have this hanging it does come with a hook in the back um mm -hmm. you've got a, a little brass hook uh it's one of those serrated hooks so you can you can pretty much hang it on anything if you're brave enough you know he, he, he can hang off the edge of just about anything i actually have this on top of a stack of books Oh, um, nice. Because I've got a I've got a big brass one, and then I, I have him on top of a of a pile of prayer books and other sort of uh, uh, books yes, of meditations books. and things like that. So, so what you're saying is that Jesus is a paperweight, is what you're saying. He makes a great. This makes a great forty two dollar paperweight. Nice. Blessed. Uh, I haven't yet. I haven't. I haven't. I think I. Um, we have a couple of priests who are in and out of Church Milton. I think I picked him up on a day we didn't have anybody in. Mm. Um, so I, I do. I do have that yet to do. Okay. Um, I, I, hmm. Hmm. I have to admit, but um, one he said all this about the Virgin Mary statue. Don't worry. When we get to this Virgin Mary statue, he'll say it all again. This cult is Catholic, right? The whole Jesus on the cross. Yes, yes, yes. This is a Catholic cult, by the way. Just so you know, a they are a Catholic splinter group. They do not believe that like the current Pope is good. They think the current Pope is like a liberal pussy. I'm not kidding you. I, I know that's going to get some people to respond and be like, ah, no, no. They literally think the current cope, the current Pope is like a gay pussy. That's what they say. They're just like, yeah, he's gay as fuck. We don't like him. It's so fucking weird. These guys are weird. 
of the things that's lovely about this bronzed finish that we noticed on previous products is they're able to pick things out, like here, for instance. Right. Which is lovely. Where in the home would you recommend that people have I this? I love what you're doing with it. I mean, anywhere that um, I think once you bring it into your home, you're going to find the perfect place. I love that you're using it as a paperweight. Oh, my God. What a great idea. Who would have ever thought of using Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, as a fucking paperweight? Wow! for it and it's it's very portable so you could move it around at different times the other thing i like about it is his <laughs> it's portable crown. huh um you can really, love it it's really detailed it's in gold i don't i don't know if the camera can see that Marla. i think we can we, we've we, we film here it, it, like everything we do here at church Milton, it is of the highest production quality uh, and we are filming in in 4k which means that we will be able to as you're watching Rode says, I find it so hard not to root for Milo in the endless battle against Deb. I do root for Milo. It is a bias. Listen, everybody, I will admit, even this is me being, it's, here you go. It's the cancelable moment. Ready? <gasps> Wait, that's not the right one. Time. It's time for my, can for a demon mama cancellation moment. I like him more because he's gay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's right. When If I had to choose between a, a white conservative woman and a white conservative gay man, I'm going to choose the gay guy. Oh! Yeah, that's right. That's the benefit you get. Miss, have a little bit of a zoom in. Okay. Um, you carry on describing, and I'm very, I'm sure that um, that will happen in post-production. Attention to detail in that, you know, because um, wow, I'm ashamed to wow. say I never noticed that on, on mine at home. Okay. Um, but I can see it now. You've said it. Whoops. Mm -hmm. so the crown of thorns is in is in that bronzed color, isn't it? Right, and um, as are the nails. Yes. Um, in it. What is Veronese style? Let's find out what that means. Veronese. Oh. Uh, Ver Veronese it refers to Paolo Veronese, a, uh, a supreme colorist uh, from fucking 1528. He was born in 1528, and they're calling this a Veronese-style hand-painted pewter. That feels like a real stretch. Yeah, the guy was like a Jesus painter in 1528. I just looked him up on Wikipedia. So apparently this is what he did? I don't fucking know. This guy does look like Joe Exotic. Like, I like this little crown of thorns he's got here. That's wild. Both both sides and in the feet. Right. And it's just um, having a crucifix is is it helps with the devotion. You know... Yeah. I don't always think of that when I look at it, but a lot of times when I look at a crucifix, I think, you know, in my daily life and struggles and things that are going on personally, mm. I think of what he went through mm. and I'm like, are you kidding me? How can I possibly, mm -hmm. you know, have a pity party? It puts your own challenges in perspective, doesn't it? Exactly. It's sure the same does. with Mary when we. Yeah, you know, that happens to me when I watch Game of Thrones. Whenever I watch Game of Thrones and I see Ned. You know, get his head cut off. I'm just like, wow, thank God that's not me. Thank God. It took a religious experience, you know? I'm just like, wow. I'm really happy my head isn't cut off. I would, oh, I would fucking hate to be crucified today. Thank goodness. Oh, I would fucking hate that. God. Guys, can we just take a moment and be thankful for not getting crucified today? Think about the statues of Mary, and we're going to move on to another uh, right. statuette shortly with, with, that, with that happening as well. This, I'm always... I'm frightened of of traveling with him because I don't want to to break him and I don't want him to be sort of tumbling underneath things and getting getting messy whatever. But I have to say I have traveled with him in the past. I do sometimes put him in my briefcase. And the thing about this is, as you mentioned, it is portable. You put it a is portable. and if you you put a fucking metal a metal Christ in your briefcase. I don't buy it. Nope. Lying. Totally lying. Completely lying. There is no fucking way this guy flew across America with a metal fucking cross in his briefcase. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the one. Careful 
this mm -hmm. is the crucifix that you could take with you well, when you travel. You could put it up in a hotel room, for instance. Well, to that, the box <laughs> that it comes in, hmm. it it's in like in, in case, case in case you go into any demonically possessed motels, you can put it up in your fucking motel room, guys. <clears throat> When you check into the motel, do you go, uh, sorry, do you guys have any demon problems? I need to know whether to bring in my crucifix. ...in styrofoam. So if you kept the box... No, 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 vermin, vermin. Vermin says it's fucking bronze, which means it's heavy as fuck. Uh-uh, see, you've made a mistake. It's bronze, duh. Bronze, duh, duh, duh. Bronze, duh. As in, they put bronze color on it. It's not made of bronze for $42? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's hand-painted pewter. It's painted bronze. Comes to you in. You could pop it in a suitcase. It's right there. And mm. that it's that big, and you could put it in there, and then, then it would be safe. Right, right. If so, you're the kind of person who travels with suitcases often, right. he could potentially... He could come with he you. He could come with you, and you could put him up in hotel rooms. If you are visiting and staying with friends who who aren't particularly the travel uh, Christ, as, as so many people aren't these days, you could you could you know spruce up the bedroom a bit and sleep sleep with some grace in you know in, in the and room. And I think it's a great size for a bedroom. I really do. This is I, I did hang this crucifix once when I was ill with COVID, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Pewter is what like old shitty toys are made out of. Yeah, it's 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 cheap ass metal. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, Vermin says, I see. God, pewter sucks so much. It's so fucking soft. Yeah, you can indent it really easily. It's super shitty. Is hanging a crucifix in your friend's house without their permission cringe? Yes, it is. But if they have a demon problem, are you going to let a demon get in the way of your sleepover? No, you're going to pop out your fucking portable Christ right now for just $25 a day. Sorry, I mean... $25 a week, you can subscribe to my Christ crucifix service, and you can have the portable Christ to take with you to all of your sleepovers so that you won't get attacked by demons at most of them. We cannot promise that the crucifix will always drive away demons, but it will most of the time. You would be a fool and a sinner to not buy into my crucifix membership. And a combination of that and the ivermectin, the various other things. As soon as I, you know, like a typical man, I refused to admit that I was sick for a really, for a really long time. Did he just say, and wait, did he just say ivermectin? Oh my God. Of that and the ivermectin, the various other things. As soon as I, you know, like a typical man. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. It's time for me to travel. What do I need to pack? Mm, yes, underwear. Mm, yes, socks. Ah, uh, yes, a uh, giant Christ. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, yes, ivermectin powder. Ah, uh, how fantastic. Refused to admit that I was sick for a really, for a really long time. <laughs> and then when I finally admitted it, because I was laying on the bathroom floor, because it was the coldest bit of the house, you know, in a really bad way, just like, please. I thought, okay. I gotta do something about this. So I called the doctor, I got some medications, and I started rearranging my bedroom so that I was surrounded by things that would comfort me. It does help. And things that would, things that would help. And so that was the time I managed in my stupor and blurriness and dizziness to get a nail in the wall. <laughs> you know, one of those, one of those little picture, picture, those picture hooks, you know? Right. Um, which is they're just the perfect size for this. Right. And so I, I had him uh, uh, above the bed. Damn, I didn't know you would need all that holy backup for a fucking cold. So what I'm getting here is that Milo got COVID and had such a bad time that he nailed himself into his bedroom surrounded by crucifixes. Guys, I, I think that might have been... I don't know if that was actually COVID. I don't know if that was actually COVID. And... um. You know, it's the first thing you see when you wake up, and and uh, and, and I like I like to think so. Wait a minute, you just, caught him. Uh, shaved him. He's lying. You said, Alley Cat points out. Wait a minute, he said he didn't hang it up. That this was his Christ paperweight. He's lying. We caught him. You're right. He said he didn't lie. He didn't hang it up. He explicitly said he didn't hang it up, and that he used it as a paperweight. We caught him. Fucking salesman moment. Fucking busted. A few days off my recovery. <laughs> Fucking liar. We do offer this in uh, the bronze um, crucifix too.
Oh. So that's so the all bronze. The all bronze. So the crucifix himself, you know, he is in bronze and the background is bronze. So the whole thing is, um, it's a matter of, you know, decor, what you like. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I can get that and sometimes I can't. <laughs> that's a little tricky, but, but nonetheless, just so you know that there are options and that we do have larger, we have a lot of statues. And um, we do offer yeah. a larger statue if that's, uh, you could go online and see that. Yeah, as, as always, everything is on churchmilton.shop, uh, yes. which is the website. Now, yes. this medium crucifix is priced at forty two fifty, And uh, mm. if you are a premium member with Church Militant, um, you will get 10% off. That. This, is that, is that on this item? I don't know if it's on mm. this item. It's certain items. and I, I. They never know what their sales are on. It's super funny. They always pitch their sales, and they always forget which items are covered by the sale. It's so fucking funny. I love it. Oh my god. Don't well, you'll know. have to have a check. I don't want to say something that isn't. Um, <laughs> it's, well, we try to be we try to be uh, strictly and ruthlessly accurate, don't right. we? So you'll have to check on the website about, about that. I'm sorry to tell there you. There are a lot um, of items that that you can use. It's sort of fifty fifty, I think, on the website, yeah. isn't it? And I couldn't yeah. remember this this one exactly. So it's forty two fifty for the medium sized crucifix, and perhaps in other Hard shows to argue we'll, with that. we'll show the larger sizes. Mm -hmm. And we do. And uh, did you know? Uh, for like four times that price, you can get a giant, really good looking hand painted uh, plastic statuette of Melania from from Elden Ring. Did you know that? Wow. Just so you know, just in case you wanted something else to spend your money. It's not as cheap as the crucifix, I will say, but it looks better. We do have the all bronze. Uh, now this again is that uh, poly resin. So it's got the look and the, the luster, the patina, the uh, sheen of a, of a lovely aged metallic object. Yes. But it's um, not, it doesn't weigh a ton. Wait it's a minute. Fall it's not actually metal. It's resin. Only the Jesus is metal. Oh my God. It's so cheap. It's a fucking plastic cross with a little metal Jesus on it. Oh. That is so fucking cheesy. Off the wall uh, and break because and it's it doesn't weight. cost a ton. And it also doesn't cost a ton. That's also <laughs> true. If it was, if it were, if it was some, if it were bronze, it's cheap. It, we wouldn't be able to offer you it for uh, forty two fifty. Yeah, look, Milo's like, don't say it's fucking cheap. She says that all the time. She's like, it's so cheap. We mask, Mama. We mask. Oh my God. Yes, sure. And of course, this is a beautiful gift to give someone. You know. You mentioned Varnish Eater brings up an important question. Varnish Eater asks, why would you buy this garbage? Christianity and Christian cults like this are the ultimate grift. They convince people that it is literally God's will that they purchase these shitty knickknacks and fill their house to every corner with with Christian imagery. It is it's it's religion. They do this shit all the time. Do you know there are literally stores, Christian bookstores all across the nation that specifically design unique Christian uh, tchotchkes and fucking knickknacks that no one would ever buy except for to stuff fucking Easter baskets on uh, alternative because he can't do the easter basket it's got to be a easter donkey with all kinds of jesus action figure alternative pokemon cards that have jesus characters on them fucking statuettes like you wouldn't believe a hundred thousand plagiarized prayer books you wouldn't even believe it what i'm saying is uh, the original grifters are the fucking religious people they're like god wants you to have this fucking book and some people are just vulnerable to that sort of thing Jesus Pokemon is racist? You don't remember. You don't know. When I was a fucking kid, I remember when my parents were threatening to take away my Yu-Gi-Oh cards and we went to the Christian bookstore and they had a Jesus Christ Bible card battle game. And my parents were thinking about giving us that as the alternative to Yu-Gi-Oh. You just don't understand. You don't fucking understand. Do you know how traumatizing that is as a child? to hang on the balance between getting crappy Jesus battle cards and getting to keep your Yu-Gi-Oh collection? You don't understand. You don't understand how bad the Christian nonsense product world goes.
mentioned it was from the Veronese collection, and yes. I noticed the design is that's that's the, the design of the cross is especially lovely. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, just just how it how the cross is behind him because it's very unusual. Mm -hmm. It's almost um, you know like a it's almost like a fleur de lis at the top. Yeah, in, it does in look like the, that. the cross in, in the bottom and. Um, and just the style of it is is very very nice. Big Orange Jew asked, "Did you ever watch Bible Man?" I did watch Bible Man. My brother was so fucking into Bible Man that we got Bible Man we got fucking Bible Man merch. Okay, Bible Man is atrocious, by the way. It is the most painful thing. Bible Man is we gotta watch Bible Man on stream sometime. It is fucking wild. Okay, Bible Man is absurd. There's an episode of Bible Man where he kills people for being vain. Like, he kills people with a laser gun because they were too vain. It's so messed up. By comparison, Salty was super good. Oh, and VeggieTales is wholesome as hell. You have... I did watch Salty. I saw Salty live. That's right. I did. I got to meet Salty. Let me show you what Salty looked like. Let me show you the horror that is Salty. Can I, can I, can I just demonstrate this? Okay, prepare to scream. All of you are going to be horrified now. This is fucking Salty. Get it? He's a book of Psalms. Salty. Get it? That's him. I met this I met a salty cosplayer at a salty event. He's a, he's a salter? Yeah, he 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 what do you think he does? He salts people. There's nothing What do you why are you reacting like that? I just said he salts people, as in he gives them psalms. It's um Quite like lavish, I said, isn't it? It's quite lavish. It it has so much deep, deep in the scale of my life that is not scary. I'm very sorry for you. Tail for for the 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 money you're paying to to be honest, you know, right. and and um I have I have such success with people coming back and saying we just love it, you know, yeah. and we Wait, you mean the sexiest book of the Bible? Wrong. The sexiest book of the Bible is Song of Solomon. We have a lot in the Veronese. <laughs> Wait, did I just miss something? Hold on, let's try this again. You know, right. and and um, I have I have such success with people coming back and saying we just love it, you know. Yeah. And we have a lot in the Veronese line. That's it's what all wonderful. our statues are because they're just the best. And and I notice also, as with the Mary statues, and as with so many of, of the other statues you can find on the website and in the store here in uh, here at Church Monson HQ. The faces are good on these, aren't they? Yes. They've really paid such close and, and careful attention to making sure there's a that there's the serenity, the beatitude. Right. You know, it's very, um, it's very, it's very calming, and prayerful. it's something you can look at and connect with. Yeah. And and that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I notice also here it's got that. Wait. Okay, this is a really this is a really minor nitpick. I know these two are really struggling to sell these Christian things, but it's kind of weird to say that you can like uh that you can like connect to it when her earlier sales point was that you can't imagine the pain that Jesus went to. So how the fuck do you connect with him if you literally can't imagine the pain that he went through? Slight green of aged bronze, as though it were one of those big statues out in the thing. They've right. really made an effort they to make really, this really look. Have. It's quite an extraordinary effect, the way that they've managed to make this look like aged bronze. Yes. Uh, okay. This part of his hair, straight up, just looks like egg whites. I don't know what Milo was thinking with this hairdo. I think he had it all the way until the platinum blonde tips, which unironically just looks like spare cotton or egg whites or something. Yeah, dry ramen. I, I don't get it. This part looks good. I can even dig the weird fucking Joe Dirt shit, but the blonde tips is a little much. Um, and, and I have 
aged bronze, you know, in the house. And and sometimes the metal doesn't quite look as nice, particularly in photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you're somebody who likes to take photographs of your sacred objects and if you know and, and things that you have that are blessed in the house, uh, sometimes these look a bit better than the metal ones because they've done all this lovely detail and, and sort of pre. See, that's good sales right there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. This, these are. It's not fake. It's not cheap plastic. It looks better than metal. See, that's. This is why I say My Milo is a good salesman. He always sells the negatives. He goes, no, no, no. It's not. It's not unfortunately made of resin. It is resin. It's 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 light. You can carry it with you on the plane. You can. Uh, it looks better in photos than metal. Salesmanship aged it it's wonderful you know what? i'm glad you pointed this out to me the, the crown of thorns i've never noticed that before. true <laughs> sparkle cat you've been around these things a lot longer than, yeah. uh, than me in the store here it's fun it's lovely now the treat for you okay. i'm going to move on to is this your favorite item that we have it is one of my favorite items yes <laughs> <laughs> no no deb he set you up is this your favorite item well, it's one of my favorite items. No, you're selling it. No, you say yes. This is my favorite item. What are you talking about? Oh, God damn it, Deb. Constantly. Tell us about it. Well, you know, I'm a revert into Catholicism. And um, my background, I was growing <laughs> Cold cast polyresin in bronze. It's literally plastic painted the color of bronze, the Michelangelo fake Pieta, it's plastic colored bronze. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I fucking love the jargon. Cold cast polyresin in bronze, as in not cast in bronze, but rather it's in the color bronze. Do you see this? It's, oh, it's, oh my God. This is why we watch this, folks. This is why. And yes, $87.50. They couldn't even give you the $50 off, 50 cents off. Not up Catholic, but it was the church of... Nisrathi points out this is as, expen as, is as expensive as a silicone monster cock. No, not, not just, this isn't just as expensive as a silicone monster cock. This is as expensive as an insertable strap on wearable monster cock don't ask me why i know that price let's continue nice that right. i was brought up in right. and so when i came back in i wanted i there's just so much i wanted to know mm -hmm. i'd never really heard of the pieta and and i, I wanted to know more about it because <clears throat> excuse me when you look at the statue it's like what exactly is that so i did <clears throat> research and I looked at what it was all about. And when you when you bring the story into what's happening, I'm very sorry, but... <clears throat> yeah. Oh, now interesting. If it's actually cast, then no. Two-part resin is actually ra relatively expensive right now since COVID and the supply line issues, just for the record. Ooh. But what is it actually? We'll never know, will we? I'm better. <laughs> Um, it, um, uh, is so moving, you know, I, I am a mother, mm -hmm. so I know that when, um, my son is hurting or has hard times, you mm. know, it's part He's dead. He's fucking dead. He's not hurting. He's fucking dead. What you, the Pietas when, is about when Mary had to carry her dead her dead son, he's dead. He's not hurting. He's fucking dead. What are you fucking talking about, Deb? Part of my heart, and, right. and you feel that, you know? And so the fact is that this is Mary, and this is when <laughs> The she's... ultimate dead. The ultimate hurt. This has come down. <laughs> True the striped cross, kidder. And his dead body is laid into her lap, and she's... She, this is this is what this is all about. It's the apex of heartbreak in the it's, biblical stories, isn't it? It's It's the... You just, one just can't even imagine the grief. Yeah. Of having, having to see your own son in that way. And most people will at some point in their life experience that with their parents, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, unless they're estranged or whatever. At some point, most people will have that terrible experience with their parents. I, um, 
I wasn't there when my my father passed, but I was in the room when my grandmother passed, who pretty much raised me. Mm. And although it's a very different kind of dynamic, even just the closeness of that, it's one of those. It's family. It's the moment that can shape the rest. It's family. That's 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 what Deb's great takeaway. We're discussing one of the a, a replica, of course, of one of the greatest works of art. And Deb's takeaway is, well, it's family. Family, 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 family. Yeah, it's fucking Fast and the Furious up in here. Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's family, right, guys? Of your life, right. you can realize I've got to fix some things. I've got to got to take better care of the people who I, I have now. You know, I've mm -hmm. got to make sure that everything that she did for me and everything that she told me that I do. Jesus job, is a part of the Fast and Furious you know? family, of right. course. And and so that's that's the closest reference. Come on, point do you even I have to ask? As a as a guy who doesn't have kids yet. Mm -hmm. Um that's the closest reference point I have to this. But um why don't you talk us through the the statue itself of this um <clears throat> of this moment. It's also um I think non-Catholics will sometimes ask, well, why don't you have something uplifting in the house? Why don't you have something inspiring? Why must it be an image or a, a statue of such a moment of heartbreak? Oh, okay. Listen. So, what you just heard, you will not know this unless you're a Christian. Unless you're a fucking Christian, you won't realize Catholics and Protestants make fun of each other all the time. And one of the things that Catholics get made fun of all the time for is being depressing. Because Catholics have images of people dying and getting tortured. They have dead bodies everywhere. Catholicism really is a very grim religion. It's very dark in a lot of ways. It's very... I mean, it's, it's it has Dark Souls energy. Let's just put it that way, okay? There's skeletons, relics, dead bodies. Uh, they keep corpses in their basement, all kinds of wild shit. So Protestants make fun of Catholics all the time for saying, why are you so grim and dark? What you're hearing right now is Catholics being sensitive about getting made fun of. Listen to it back. I'm telling you. Listen. Well, why don't you have something uplifting in the house? Why don't you have something inspiring? Why must it be an image or now a, you a know. statue now you know now you have the knowledge of heartbreak maybe you could to help help to help well, to explain because there's going to be people at home who are like i must have this like this is this is right up my street and they're going to be people at home who don't understand perhaps exactly. why you might have this well i'll tell you um the reason i have it is because it's part of my my shrine my little small little shrine polare says Yes, my friend who's non-Christian wanted to go to all the cathedrals when we went to Portugal, and I warned I warned her she's going to see a lot of suffering Jesuses. My God, it was more dead Jesus than even I expected. Death imagery, death masks, there are churches that display the skulls of saints and the teeth and fingers of saints. Catholicism is some dark-ass shit at times. And so Protestants who all, tend to focus on the more positive... I say that in quotes. They tend to focus on the more positive aspects of Christianity. Always make fun of Catholics about this, and a lot of Catholics are super insecure about it. At my house, and um, I love to reflect on the crucifix and what it means, and then to come to this. Of course, yes. Because this is what happened immediately afterward, mm -hmm. and um, the feeling that um, you know she she had to feel hopeless. It was like. You know, um, she saw the pain that Christ, that her son went through. She watched and endured that till his last breath. And now they, they hand, they bring him down and put her on, put him on her lap. And she's, everyone would be mortified, you know, and in the realness of that, the realness of a real person like you and I experiencing this, um, it's just beyond belief, and yet it really happened. And it helps to make the story, make the stories in the Bible, the history of that, and everything that it has created in, in the beautiful faith that we now follow, more visceral and more real. I think. Yes. Right? Yes. You were mentioning the Church of Nice earlier on. They sh they they like some bits of the story, but they shy away from the rest. Thank you very much for the tier one sub, Mads. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you. You make this show happen. Thank you.
Christ, you know, right. like Luther when he wants to do his Protestant Bible. It's like, well, you know, we do the Bible and you know, blah, 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 but not those books. They, right. they, they, they don't, they don't for some reason feel comfortable in experiencing and thinking about and meditating on the whole story. On the whole story. They even take Christ off the cross. Let's right. remember, right? Absolutely. When, when, when you walk into a, a, a church that is not Catholic, very often you'll just see two planks of wood together and they've robbed that symbol of the, of what it really stands for. Exactly. Which is This is more anti-Protestant stuff. Right here, he's like, oh, two planks of wood. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but like Jesus wasn't fucking, first of all, he wasn't crucified on an ornate cross. He was crucified on two shitty pieces of wood. This is one of the areas where I think the uh, we got to give the Protestants a few points. The Protestants often point out that Catholics coat everything in fucking gold and gems and that 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 gold and gems could be better put elsewhere and they're kind of right about that the catholics say they do it to remind you of the importance but there is a lot of vanity involved in coating your entire existence in gold and gems there's also something weirdly even more ahistorical than religion uh in in like portraying christ as being like crucified on like a golden gem encrusted conveniently you know conveniently you know uh, uh, provides value to the church by having gems and gold that you have in your you know in your possession interestingly you build wealth that way but that's neither here nor there isn't it a bit odd i mean do you really think that it's communicating the truth yeah we have to send in bible man everybody Yep. Protestant churches are more bland than Catholic. Yeah. Gay Fesh says Louis C.K. sucks, but there was a really great episode of his show where he's sent to Catholic school as a kid. And after he learns about the passion, he freaks out and tears Jesus off the, cru the, the church crucifix. The episode ends with a handyman literally nailing Jesus back onto the crucifix. <laughs> okay, that is pretty funny. Now that you mention it, it does seem weird to decorate a cross if you hate a dude enough to kill him. Yeah, he was he was he was crucified on a shitty piece of wood. Jesus was a was was a prisoner being executed. He wasn't put up on like a golden thing. Catholics do that to enhance the viscerality of it, but you can hear here he's kind of coping a little bit. There's a little bit of Catholic cope going on here. I'm just going to say suffering which, which is, is and 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 the redemption and you know what he uh, atonement redemption absolution all things that jesus christ died for for us for us don't yes. exist where if he's not on there you know uh, right and this is an extension i suppose of that yes isn't it that, and and the and the thing of it is is they were both people on earth mm. he was divine and she was um they were both people on earth which is why you need this poly resin miniature recreation of michelangelo's depiction of a f of his imagined version of these real people that's what you that's what you should take away from all of this blessed you know uh, <sighs> but they were walking the earth just like you and i and and um, they believed. I mean, well, of course, he was God. Miss Nibiru says, Jesus didn't die to be turned into a mini polyresin statue. No. Jesus died to be turned into a marketable Funko Pop. That's right. Coming to stores near you, the Jesus Christ Funko Pop. But she believed in him. Yes. I mean, she believed that this was for a reason and a cause, and and they were right here. And we need to we need to live that and know what, why, and what happened. It's another dimension of it as well, isn't it? I'm just while you were talking, I was thinking the the fact that she believed in her son. Lots of parents don't believe in their kids. Right. They don't have confidence <laughs> in faith what? that their children are doing, but she had absolute certainty. Yes, that without a question. What came out of his mouth she could rely on <laughs> which is a lovely thing to remember as well so there's so much to unpack when meditating in front of this mm -hmm. um it is one of oh. the heavier items in the store because it it's solid this is this is the kind of uh, centerpiece isn't it of it is. something in your home you know if one of your arrangements oh, your shrine your altar, whatever uh talk us through the statue itself 
He's quite buff, isn't he? Jesus is going <laughs> He's <laughs> not no there, Jesus has been lifting. Yes. <laughs> You have to be kidding me. This has to be fake. This is queso and chips. This has to be fake. This is fake. This is fake. This is Funko Pop news. This is fucking fake. There's no way this is real. Nope. Nope. It's fake. No, wait. It's a real product, but it's not made by Funko Pop. It's made by a, a company called Joy Pop. It's a Christian Funko Pop alike. Oh no! Wait, it's here. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Boom Four Figures, the hottest craze in the street. The delivery person. It's real. It's a real bootleg. A Christian bootleg. Ah! I need this. If anybody, if somebody sends me. The Jesus Joy Funko Pop, the knockoff. If somebody can source me one of these and send it to me, I will put it in my backdrop. This is the only Funko Pop I will ever go for. But I need this. Holy shit. This is incredible. The knockoff joysareus.com. Oh my god, it's even like completely operated out of a out of a fucking P.O. box. This is such classic. Oh, this is such classic Christian bootlegging. Okay, guys. A lot of you don't know this, but Christian bootlegging is like a huge thing. There are a fuckload of Christian bootleg products where they obviously couldn't get the rights to make a, uh, their own version of it. So they just bootleg them. It's wild there is an entire black market of christian bootlegs in fact there's been books written about christian bootleg video games that were not approved by nintendo but that nonetheless were sold all over america holy shit that's wild christian harry potter oh i'm sure they have their own little versions I'm sure it's uh, very interesting. Anyway, let's continue, everybody. Oh, that's unfortunate. If anybody, can see if anybody can source me one of those Jesus Christ figures, holy shit, I will put that Funko Pop up in the background. Oh, my God. Agony in his face. Yes. You, you can just feel, you can see the, you know, that he's just like a, a puddle, because you would be, mm. you know, after what he just... Don't you feel like it's a little sacrilegious to describe the dead the dead body of Jesus as a puddle? I know they don't mean it, but like <laughs> he's just a puddle. Well, he's actually very artfully depicted here. I don't think he looks like a puddle at all. Oh my god. Endured on the cross um and and just the way he's lying, you know, and it, he's just yeah. There's something about them on the jagged rocks as well, isn't there? The, right. The, on, on this particular base. Let's turn it around because it's just, again, the detail. You can see the back. It's just, he's on, the, they're on, sitting on a rock and, and the... Well, the detail, it's a reproduction of the Michelangelo Pieta, one of the most famous sculptures of all history. I should hope that it ha that it's like at least reproduced accurately. I don't feel like it's fair to really praise this thing alone when it's like literally imitating Michelangelo. Oh, come on. Flowing up the garments. Oh shit, $350 yeah. is beautiful. absurd. Yeah, it's that that's same off thing. The rails. So is this the Veronese collection as well? Yes, it is. So all, our, same, all our statues. So that same thing that that's an incredibly gifted, I don't know who has, who has done this or whether it's a replica of a larger one or- They or, do, oh yes, this is this is from the Michelangelo, the, oh, the real is, deal, is, you know, is, they, yeah. they tried to if, depict- uh, right. They finally did. So this they is just one of the slightly now. more expensive statues, um, but it's still uh, eighty-seven fifty. So it's not in the giant um, uh, territory. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people like to have these six-foot things. Right. Uh, it's eighty-seven fifty. <laughs> oh, who has a six-foot statue recreation of Michelangelo's Pieta in their house? What are you talking about, Milo? Who the fuck has a six-foot represent? <laughs> 
What? And this again is in the same what we call cold coffee. Come on! It's that same. Uh, this is a little heavy. Bullshit. So this one I would suggest that you don't take to your hotel room. Uh, this this is one. Yeah, to, that'd be a bit much. This is one to stay at home. Although I, the way I travel, I have to tell you, I do take quite a lot with me when I go away. <laughs> Well, you I took, believe you, you admitted you. to taking a But I really crucifix. think that if it's ever possible, you know, um, a candle burning near it, because it's got so many uh, shades and depths to it that it right, just right. it just highlights it even more. And because it's it's got it, because it's two people on this road, there are all these different nooks and crannies of it that you can take time to explore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, I love. <laughs> I'm Joker fighting. Yes, you could take time exploring all of Jesus's nooks and crannies, all of Mary's nooks and crannies. You can take all the time you want to explore them. Come on. I love the idea of putting a candle in. Oh, he does this every time, by the way. Every episode, there's a fuckload of innuendo that he drops in. He read, oh my God. In one of the episodes, he reads from the prayer book and he reads a book about submitting to your man. Unironically. And he just looks dead in the camera and reads this long passage about submitting to your man. From the it's supposed to be from it's a a prayer for women that he reads. It is oh, it is amazing. It's wonderful. And you know they have the the candles that are flameless now. You know that would do this. Well, some people just want to be careful. Deborah. I know. Deborah. I like the real thing, <laughs> but you know. Oh, oh, getting wrecked. Well, maybe, maybe you're in an environment where you can't light a flame. Exactly. You know, it's, it's possible. You could be in a, exactly. for, for instance, let, let's be honest, you could be in a hospital. You could be in a nursing home. You could be in a school or in a dorm. Um, you, there, there are all kinds of places where you're not able to, to um, have a real candle out there. Right. But I love that. I love that idea. So because the light sort of flickering and 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 catching different bits of it every time because with the, with the flame moving, that must be lovely. Is that what you do at home? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing about it that I, I haven't mentioned is just the pure love. Oh, one hundred percent. Sparkle Cat says I'm convinced he's doing this on purpose to make Deborah mildly uncomfortable because his innuendo has just enough plausible deniability that she can't say anything. One hundred thousand percent. Yes. He did this. It is he does this way, way more when he's on screen with Michael Voris. Both him, but especially Milo, is flirting with Michael the entire time. But just plausible, just enough plausible deniability that the Christians don't call it out. Hmm. That she had for him, and and he for her. But but um, it it has to go. It has to be said because um. You just feel her pain, her love, her emotion, the emotion of, of it all. And um, it's quite stunning. Yeah. The emotion of it all. I'm really moved by the emotion of it all. It's beautiful. It's That's, a very nice thing to reflect on. It is. It is. Um, well, the Pieta is uh, 8750 in the cold cast bronze. It's six and a quarter inches tall. Nah, cold cast bronze. That's poly resin painted bronze. Don't fucking mislead people. Oh no! Oh, it looks very Jesusy. Super. This is a very Jesusy. It makes you feel Jesusy. Uh, so a little shorter than the crucifix. Um, I don't think I mentioned how tall the crucifix was. It's nine. I? All right, this is nine inches. Yeah, I don't know if um, that helps the uh, viewer. But yeah, maybe we'll just. If you are thinking about picking it up as a pair or a set or anything, since they do go so beautifully together, mm -hmm. um, those are the relative sizes for you. Should be able to. They do not look good together. Neither of these. These are not complementary. The color, the shade is not even the same. The Jesus is a different style and a different color. And the entire style is totally different. This is hyper ornate. This is hyper simplistic. God damn it. God damn it. I keep hiccuping. Or a set or anything since they do go so beautifully together. Mm -hmm. um, those are the relative sizes for you. You should be able to tell with us what kind of sizes they are. Uh, let's move on to our third item. Okay. It's a book, um, and we sometimes like to finish these shows with a little reading, so I'm happy to do that. You've selected. Oh, yes. Uh, please, please let the reading be horny. Oh, please let the reading be horny. The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. Now, this is one of the books. Let's talk about the, 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 the how it's presented first, and then we'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what it is. Okay. So 
This is actually we should do it the other way around, shouldn't we? That's more important. So this is <laughs> this is one of those very very famous uh, meditations on how to live a more pious life, how to live a right. life yeah, pious, uh, more yes, according yep. Yep. to very the example set down uh -huh. by Christ. And so there are all kinds of uh, suggestions, instructions, mm -hmm. uh, recommendations in this book, which is one of uh, this is one of the, I would say the most famous books in Christianity that isn't the Bible, that isn't the Catechism, uh, written by an iconic Catholic author, and and we'll talk a little bit more about about who he was in a minute. Um, again, with with illustrations very much in line with what we've been talking about today, uh, and there are. I'll read you the table of contents. It'll give you a little bit of a sense of, mm -hmm. of what the that's kind of advice idea. that's given. Um, of the imitation of Christ and the contempt of all the vanities of the world. Of having a humble opinion of oneself. Contempt of all the vanities of the world, they say in a $30 gold, gold painted, a fake leather bound book. Yeah. Okay. Of reading Come the on. Holy Scriptures. Come on. Of flying vain hope. Ah, Christians. Flying. God damn it. God damn it, Christians. <laughs> My copy is quite dog-eared on those pages, Deborah, I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> of obedience and subjection, uh, of avoiding the superfluity of words, of the utility of adversity. Um, and that's from that's from a, a section on useful admonitions for a spiritual life. There's also admonitions concerning interior things, things like a good conscience. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, internal consolation. Uh, so that's, that's um, the spiritual life and contemplation reflection. And then I think there's... I am so excited to see what he has set out. Um, there's another book or two, isn't there? Yes, uh, another one uh, of the Blessed Sacrament. So talking about the sacrament, um, this is uh, about how to acquire grace, whether through devotion or whatnot. Adoration. And, yeah, adoration. You have selected for me a little passage to read. Uh, oh, us... no, Deb picked it. God damn it. Deb picked the one. Oh, they, they, they figured it out. They took they took away his 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 verse choosing things because he kept picking horny ones. God damn it! God fucking damn it! Tell us what you've you've chosen for me. Well, I wanted to go in the theme of what we were talking about, so um, I I went through there and and it's um, like Christ. I I believe it's the time when right before he gets crucified. I believe if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. And I just thought it, it reads beautifully. And this this is this this book is a spiritual guide. You know, we're we're on our phones, we're on YouTube, we're we're all over the place. But but you sit, you know, unzip this leather book, and you you get yourself, you know, in a place. You could certainly take this on the road. I think I'm going to mm. buy this for you, Milo. Oh, I think you need I that. I love that. I think maybe I do. I... So, um, but yes. He already said he had a copy. Deb, you're not fucking listening. He already said he has a copy of this exact one. He just said he has one that's dog deer. God damn it, Deb! Deb! Jesus Christ! It, it, to be reflective and try it and, and use these beautiful words, and it's so well illustrated, mm. to, to try to walk in the path of God. What's nice about this edition, as you say, is it's a good thing to travel with. And because it's a sort of pocket guide to really it covers almost all of the different uh what would you say all the different um characteristics personality traits of a good humble pious person right and walks you through how you ought to behave in your dealings with others and how you ought to regulate your own thinking and 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 and, and gives your you some... interior spirituality right that's right. it starts there and yes. then and then mm. you know you mm. zoom from that What's lovely yeah. about this, um, we, we have some products that are in what we call our ultra soft cover, which are designed to be sort of, you know, put in a handbag and all the rest of it. This is leather, mm -hmm. but it's not really a book with a cover. It's more like a book with a case, yeah. isn't it? Um, almost like a handbag, because once you've zipped it up, it is impossible for you to have any accidents with it. Right. You can't accidentally tear the pages out. You can't get them dog-eared. You can't, you know, have the pen in your bag, start doodling on it by accident. You can't have orange juice spilt on it. Well, maybe if it was really sitting in it for a long time, but um, right. so long as you rescue it quick, it probably wouldn't get in there. This becomes a sort of battle-worthy. Lady Hopium says, Milo sure likes his handbags. That's something that Milo can't suppress. 
he tries really hard in a lot of cases to like downplay his gayness, but his affinity for accessories, he cannot downplay. He is way too much of a queen. He is way, way, way too much of a princess. He just can't. Roadworthy right. guy to living a good life. And so... It's quite beautiful. Even though the, so you, you've chosen beautifully, Deborah, because even the zip matches the. <laughs> it's got it's got an aged aged process, but this is real. Oh, leather, I love. So can... Wait, don't get me wrong. I fucking love being gay. I would never be like. I would fail at pretending to not be gay. I would totally. If there was like a person that was like pretend to not pretend to be straight or you die, I would die. It's just how it goes. You can smell pages. Well, this smells more like new book than leather, but I'm sure you'll get both of it. <laughs> uh, with, you know, also notice. Listen, he just really likes the smell of leather. Yep. What a lovely, it's got a lovely sort of laminated mm -hmm. um, interior. And the pages, um, this is very much like, uh, like the pages uh, that you would get in a larger Bible. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of paper, but not quite, not thin like that. There's a little bit more substantial, and of course, it does have the the gilted, the lovely gilted edges. Mm -hmm. oh, I've lost my place that you found for me, so you must tell me where it was well, again. Oh, you took well, it's I, in I, the I back took, somewhere. I, I took. I, 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 I have to. I have to tell you. I'm sorry. I took. Oh, I, I have to took the bookmark out. Um, so let's find. I think I found it again. There we okay. go. Okay. So it's chapter fifty-eight. Um, is there anything else that you want to share? Oh, we should tell people how much it is, shouldn't we? Okay. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Tell us what, tell us uh, the, the other details. So it's 22... Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, this is the one. This is me trying to not be gay, okay, everybody? This was me trying really hard, okay? Attention! B -b 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 Bazinga! Attention, everybody. I'm here to tell you that the transsexual allegations are false. Okay? I can't. <laughs> I... <laughs> I can't even tell you <laughs> why I would ever need to address such ridiculous <laughs> claims. But let me tell you, I am not gay. There, I am really not gay. I don't love coochie. I don't love cunts. I don't love dicks. I don't love none of that. I am not gay. It was all made up. It was all made up. It was all made up. Fuck me. Should generally not. Did you did you guys uh did you guys were you convinced everyone? Yeah, see this is why I would die if anybody told me I had to pretend to not be gay. No, failing. Just absolutely failing. I would get owned. Let's just hope that it never comes to that because I'll be the first to be done. They'll get me. 95. Um, Fuck the closet. It is uh, a zippered cover, as we said, and it's gold stamped, bonded leather case, okay. zipper, nice. gilted pages. Okay. Um, You're reading off a product. Of the Life yep. of Christ. Um, They're quite classic, quite well-known images, I meant to say, by a very well-known artist. And and I notice also, um, and you can read more about this on, on the website, mm -hmm. um, this is um, a book that uh, St. Therese of Lisieux knew by heart. Right. Oh, yeah. She by the way, one thing I do unironically feel bad for Milo about is that Milo literally has to carry this show 100%. Like, Deb literally can't do one thing. Every single time he tries to pass the mic to, to Deb to like, you know, be like, so what do you think, Deb? He has to rescue her. It's so unfortunate. He's carrying it so hard. You knew the whole thing by heart. I, I just wrote, you know, like, this is what our world needs today. And um, nice. it entails the beauty and wisdom of the divine will. Something that we all need to look at, you know, and as I go deeper into the faith, I, I love these things that go into the interior and, and really, because that's where it starts, you know, you got to have God in your heart and mm -hmm. and it, these types of things just help. Yeah. The, um, what? I think if you were to do the same. Nonsense. I just really like the will of the divine, you know, this interiority, it becomes exter externalized, you externalize it and, and you know. It's just, I just, I just feel the interiority of Jesus, you know, it's, it's really, I'm really feeling it guys, guys, you know,
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been feeling a lot of some most fucking Jesus shit. You know, there's, there's a lot of interiority this whole thing. It's like, oh, Jesus comes inside of you and helps you fucking, you know, all of a sudden you're putting out all the grace and glory and glory coming all over. Fucking, everybody fucking covered in grace and glory. Mm, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, back to you, Milo. My name is St. Therese of Lisieux. And you were to memorize this, I think we'd be well on your way to a uh, first class ticket upstairs, wouldn't you? <laughs> Thank you, Spaghetti Sakes. What a party trick. Deeply you imagine, how friend, Thank you. imagine how her friend said, uh, do, uh, do chapter 52. <laughs> She'd just go. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. On demand. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Ada Stardust says she hallucinated a marriage ring to Jesus Christ made of his own foreskin hallucinated a mass making her the patron saint of the internet tv and streaming what what are you talking about saint tara teresa what uh oh Is this for, is this real? I can't tell. Where can I find out more about this? I feel like I'm being bullshitted. Can it? Can you get? Can I? Can I find this? That's wild. The hell? Saint Teresa of the Roses. Is that the one? Saint Teresa. I don't know what you're talking about. What is this shit? Saint Teresa of the Cadbury eggs. Okay, all right. All right, you're fucking with me. You all are fucking with me. Listen, just because I was a Christian doesn't mean that I can have encyclopedic knowledge of every crazy Christian bullshit that has ever come up, okay? Christians have done the wildest shit. Christians have, like, the fucking left toe of fucking Peter that they're like, yeah, this guy's left toe is imbued with divine energy. If you smell it, you'll be blessed for a hundred years, and you guys are expecting me to take every fucking link seriously? Sorry if I don't always trust it and think you're just making it up. Yeah, and yes, I was a, I was raised Protestant, not Catholic. Catholics have all kinds of other fucking bullshit. Catholic, literally, learning about Catholicism is like studying the fucking Prima strategy guide for the game Blasphemous. And yes, I know Blasphemous is literally drawing directly from Catholic myth. But it's just more accurate. If you just read that fucking strategy guide for the fucking game, you'll know more about Catholicism than you would from actually studying Catholicism. I swear to God. My family raised me Catholic and they didn't want me to be a pansexual taxidermist? Okay. True! Catholics had it coming. They know they knew what they were they they knew what they were getting into. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will get a little on demand too. I'll, I'll, I'll read a little until we uh, until we run out of time. Um, mm -hmm. But here's here's chapter fifty eight, and this is from the book about internal consolation, and it's titled "Of Not Searching into High Matters, Nor into the Secret Judgments of God." I see, I see. You pick me, you pick, <laughs> you've picked me something about staying on, uh, sort of planting your feet on the earth, haven't yes. you? Staying, staying, uh, staying grounded. We're gonna whip you into cheek. <laughs> Good Thank, luck. Thanks, Deborah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I keep forgetting my pass for the uh, church militant for the main building. And there's a lovely man here called Mike who is in charge of uh, keeping, keep, keeping us all on the straight and narrow with our pass. He's referring to the, the leader of the cult, Michael Voris. He keeps threatening to, to fine me $5 every time I forget it. I told him, good job. Good, good luck collecting. Good luck collecting. <laughs> anyway, let's finish um, in a more elevated place. Uh, with just a, just a few paragraphs from yes, the, the guy he flirts with, the guy he is absolutely fucking. Um, uh, I think it's, it's fair to say, maybe aside from Holy Scripture and and missals and possibly the Catechism, perhaps the best loved book. Look uh, up Catherine of Siena. 
All right, let's do it. Catherine of Siena, a lay member of the Dominican Order, was a mystic activist and author who had a great influence on Italian literature and on the Catholic Church. Canonized in 1461, she is also a doctor of the church. Born and raised in Siena, she wanted from she went, wanted from an early age to devote herself to God against the will of her parents. She joined the Mantellate, a group of pious women, primarily widows, informally devoted to the Dominican spirituality. Her, her influence with Pope Gregory played a role in his decision to leave Avignon for Rome. The Pope then sent Catherine to negotiate a peace with Florence. After Gregory's death and the conclusion of the peace, she returned to Siena. She dictated to secretaries her set of, pu of spiritual treatises, the Dialogues of Divine Providence. The Great Schism of the West led Catherine of Siena to go to Rome with the Pope. She sent numerous letters to popes, to princes and cardinals to promote obedience to Pope Urban VI and to defend what she called the vessel of the church. She died exhausted by rigorous fasting. She starved herself to death? She was the second woman to be declared a doctor of the church, followed by Teresa of Avila. Ah! The people of Siena wish to have Catherine's body, but a story is told of a miracle whereby they were partially successful. Knowing they could not smuggle her whole body out of Rome, they decided to take only her head, which they placed in a bag. When stopped by Roman guards, they prayed to Catherine to help them, confident she would rather have her body in Siena. When they opened a bag to show the guards, it appeared to no longer hold her head, but instead was full of rose petals. Uh... Uh... So wait, is this the Teresa that you were talking about before? Teresa of Avila? Oh boy. Patroness of Spain. I don't think this is the same one. Anyway, that's interesting. The fourth, devotion of ecstasy, is where the consciousness of being in the body disappears. Sensory faculties cease to operate. Memory and imagination also become absorbed in God, as though intoxicated. Body and spirit dwell in the throes of exquisite pain, alternating between a fearful, fiery glow, incomplete unconscious helplessness, and periods of apparent strangulation. Sometimes such ecstatic transports literally cause the body to be lifted into space. This state may last as long as half an hour, and tends to be followed by relaxation of a few hours of swoon-like weakness attended by the absence of all faculties while in union with God. The subject awakens from this trance state in tears. It may be regarded as the culmination of a mystical experience. Indeed, Teresa was said to have been observed levitating during Mass on more than one occasion. Yeah, I was going to say, that's some sp BDSM subspace things. Well, this is real interesting. Okay, let's continue, everybody. Let's let's not get too lost, okay? We got to finish this. Uh, for Catholics in history, this wonderfully concise... I'll be right back. I need to go to the bathroom. To Keep watching. How to live uh, a good life. Son... See thou dispute not of high matters, nor of the hidden judgments of God. Why this man is left thus, and this other is raised to so great a grace, or why this person is so much afflicted, and that other so highly exalted. These things are above the reach of man, neither can any reason or discourse penetrate into the judgments of God. When, therefore, the enemy suggests to thee such things as these, or thou hearest curious men inquiring into them, then answer with the prophet, Thou art just, O Lord and thy judgment is right. And again, the judgments of the Lord are true, justified in themselves. My judgments are to be feared, not to be searched into, for they are incomprehensible to human understanding. A nice reminder to be humble in the face of God's judgment and not always to seek to understand, but to accept. Mm -hmm. I love that. Absolutely. We'll be back again, won't we? You read beautifully. Well, thanks. Uh, we've got, um, I'm working on a secret project. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, up that alley, which I can't tell uh, our viewers about just yet. But um, if uh, if you enjoy me reading, then you might enjoy my secret project. We'll be back soon uh, in the Catholic 
uh, excuse me, the Church Militant. I keep doing that. You know, my first job was on the Catholic Herald, oh. where I was a reporter on a British newspaper, the Catholic Herald. And now I've come full circle in my life and come to work at Church Militant. My brain keeps skipping the track between the two because I feel like I've come home and I my brain keeps wanting me to say the Catholic Herald. But no, <laughs> wrong publication. <laughs> churchmilitant.shop um, for these and other beautiful items. Uh, and in the course of this show, you may have seen a special offer pop up on your screens. And if you did, oh, you best snip off to the shop quick because they're only going to appear sometimes on some videos. For instance, occasionally we'll give you um, a, uh, a discount code, a coupon code, where if you um, if you decide to take all three items from today- That's so manipulative. I can't believe churches engage in that type of ma manipulative advertising. Everybody, 